Well, a recent post or question at the RevitForum.org asked about creating uh, curved curtain wall uh, conditions, and uh, so I created a couple images to respond to that, and I thought I'd make a quick video here to just talk about briefly uh, what was involved. Uh, the first example I gave was of this guy here, which is a curtain wall that's nested inside a host wall. And these are just stock families in the uh, American Imperial template. And when I look at the properties, uh, the one thing I did change is that curtain wall one is uh, set to automatically embed, and that's not normally the case with curtain wall one. You have to t toggle that on. Um, <clears throat> so all I did to create this was uh, sketch a rectangular curtain wall in this over the top of this wall and cut itself in. And then I clicked on this Edit Profile button, which gave me a chance to edit the sketch. And all I did is replace the top line with an arc. And then I trimmed up the side so that the new top line could be the arc instead, and threw away the horizontal line at the top. And when it's done, it gives me this form. And then I can use the standard curtain grid tools to carve up the curtain wall into different slices. Uh, now what would be awkward is trying to create the uh, sunburst kind of pattern in here, which technically would be possible, but I'd have to use the, the next technique here. So you're probably better off nesting a panel in there or something. Um, so the next thing was this notion of, well, what if I wanted to create uh, curved curtain wall segments or something? And what I did here was I created a, a rectangular curtain wall that is, uh, if I look at the profile, is simply this piece here. So if I highlight that edge, I've got one here. And what I started off with was a, a rectangular wall that I just copied to clipboard. And then I would edit, edit one of these walls. So if I tab to grab this one here, for example, edit that, there's this one. So I drew this wall, and when I finished it, I then used the uh, paste option to paste in the same place. And put that rectangular curtain wall that I drew initially right on top of this one. And then uh, I edited the, the new curtain wall that I added and then drew the next set of boundaries. Well, I didn't select it here, so I goofed up, but then I'd have another one that I could edit the boundary in here, and then a third pasted on top that I edited the boundary over the top of that. Then I carefully added a mullion to the curved edge here, to the curved edge here, and then around the, the balance. What you want to avoid is putting mullions on top of each other here, because then you end up with two on this edge, two on this edge, instead of just one. And again, it's an approximation, because you can see that Revit doesn't much like this condition here at all and your ability to control where these uh, mullions stop, whether they're continuous or whether they break break at a join condition, uh, is somewhat limited when you run into this. So I only have the choice to deal with the one below it, not the one uh, one above it. The cur this curved one here doesn't give me those choices. I can click on them all day, but they don't really do anything. <coughs> so that was that one. Then the other thing I mentioned in the response at the blog, or at the, uh, for at the Reddit forum, was that you can also nest other walls in a host. So in this case, I've drawn a, uh, a brick wall, four inch brick wall, over the top of a host wall. And then I used the cut geometry option, which is found here, cut geometry to cut that wall into the other wall. And what ends up happening is you end up with a, a situation where, uh, it's a little hard to see here because I'm not cutting at the correct elevations. But if I go to the south elevation, you can see how they relate to that level. I'm well above the level. But by overlapping these walls, I can create a niche or reveal condition. And just for the heck of it, if I cut a section through here. <coughs> I can see that my smaller brick wall is now hosted inside here. And then if I turn around and use the good old join geometry concept, I can join the geometry between these two and then it'll send a cut line around. So it's, it's uh, not a bad way to generate uh, the desired look that you want as for constructability and obviously you'd have to consider that <coughs> and maybe a detail would be changed a little bit to help reflect what's really happening but from an early design standpoint it's a quick way to represent things okay well I hope these top topics help you out